So we should be able to prohibit this error from ever happening, right, by putting validation in. Incorrect data type. Same thing. Let's skip this one. Value constraint, size constraints. Validation or constructing our form. <coughs> For example, if the VIN number only accepts 26 characters, make the text box 26 characters big. Don't allow someone to type in more than that. So that would be that. What about foreign key constraints? In other words, a referential in, uh, integrity violation. We have an automobile, and we have a screen that allows you to enter an automobile in, and if they put in the wrong model ID, they get an error. How could we keep that from happening? Entering in an incorrect model ID. Only well, given model IDs that are exactly. valid. Limit the choices that the user can put in, and how would we do that? What would, what would be the way that would typically do that in a form? A drop down. So, our form design, putting in drop downs or radio buttons can permit that. Um, our form design also could come in in some of these other ones in incorrect data type. We could handle by, by form design in the case of a, a Boolean field, a true-false field, right? We wouldn't use a text box then, we'd use a checkbox, all right? Unique index violation, or if we're not using an auto number primary key, well, we're going to sort of try and report that one. We could write code to check before we insert it, but it's probably not worth it. It's probably worth it just to try and report the error, kind of like what we decided here. We could take extraordinary measures to check before we did it, but it's probably just as good to try it and delete it, or, or try, try to delete it, rather, and uh, if, if an error is caught, then it's caught. All right? Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Like that? Do you, on the form design side of something like mm -hmm. that, do you recommend automatically clearing out the text box? What do you mean automatically? You know, like on the form side, you know, that was always one thing I remember from VB and C Sharp, where he... If, if you put something in wrong and it caused a problem, it would it would note that you had a problem here, but it would clear out what your input was, forcing you to re-input. No, I don't I don't like that. Okay. Right. I think that's a usability issue. I, I don't think that's really a platform issue. That's a usability issue. For example, if I put in um, what would be an example? If I put in an email address, if it said please enter your email address, and I typed in something, and I, I let's say I forgot the at sign, I, I hit the wrong key instead, and it tells me invalid email address and clears out that field, I'm going to be like, what? Because mm -hmm. I don't know I hit, didn't hit the <coughs> at sign, you know? I'll, I'll be going crazy with that. Yes? I think the only place you would put that is if you had a password and you couldn't see what you were writing anyway. Well, uh, a, pass uh, yeah, I, I guess, a password, yeah, I guess, a password... Uh, a password I still probably wouldn't do that on because I would probably, if it said invalid password, I would probably look and see, gee, my password is such and such. I might look and count the number of characters and say, oh, okay, there's an extra character in there. So I wouldn't do it regardless, but that, that's just me. Um, and again, the nature of web forms is, is such that by design, they retain their value. So you'd actually have to code something special to, to do that, and I definitely don't think it's worth it uh, to do that. Um, all right. Let's now talk about the update statement. All right. And as we talk about the update statement, um, we'll implement one. We'll go into that same grid, and we'll implement it, and we'll try to anticipate any errors that we will have and we'll see what we can do to, 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 to code for it. Now one thing to remember again, if you remember the 
first board that I had up, I had under catastrophes. What is our plan for catastrophes? Our plan for catastrophes is to simply handle them gracefully. So, no matter what other approaches that we take, we're going to look and make sure that that SQL statement succeeded or not and handle it gracefully if it didn't. All right? So you might say, gee, I'm putting in this validation, I've designed my form, there's no way that they could put invalid data in here. Well, you know what? I'm still going to put the code in to see if that succeeded or failed because number one, I'm not as smart as I think I am, right? And number two, there's always those things that you can't conceivably plan for or catch. So that's sort of a catch-all, you know. So even if I do all those things that I described up here a minute ago, um, I'm still going to want to go and, and put that catch-all. Now an update statement. An update statement looks like this. Update table name. Set column equals value, comma, column equals value, comma, column equals value. For as many values as you have, many column value pairs that you have. Finally, a where clause, which again, if we're interested only in updating one given row, it will be where primary key equals some value. That's not to say that we can't do mass updates. You know, the example that we gave last time is what if we transferred everyone that I advised to NORAD? All right, we could, we could have an update student table that wouldn't use a primary key. But if we're talking about your normal table maintenance where you're going in and you're adding rows and you're updating rows, it's going to be the primary key. So, let's look at an example from the faculty table. I could say update faculty set faculty first name equal to Michael comma, faculty last name equals Jones, where FID equals 1, 2, 3, 4. The values, if they are alphanumeric, they are in quotes. If they are numeric, they're not in quotes. Their dates, I think they're in pound signs. I don't remember that one off the top of my head. All right. So that's an update statement for you. All right. We want to have a where clause on here, because if we don't have a where clause, what's going to happen? Everyone is going to be turned into Michael Jones. All right. Because the update, again, sort of the, the, the MO of SQL is if you don't specify what, that means everything, all right? So if I don't specify a where clause, that means update everything. If I don't specify a where clause, it means try to delete everything. If I don't specify a where clause, that means return everything in the query. So let's go and let's take the example we had last time and add uh, an update capability to it, all right? I might tweak the example just a little in the interest of time. So that we'll only update in a couple of minutes. So let's go here, download it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tweak the SQL first, and then I'm gonna go and uh, we'll add the update capability.
I'm going to edit this. I'm going to I'm going to tweak the sequel just a bit. Just so I don't have a massive update. Okay, so let's go here and configure the data source. Instead of saying select star from faculty, I'm going to say select FID, FF name, FL name, and location ID from faculty. That's, that's good enough. All right. I'm going to have to go in and add my delete column back in. I'm going to enable deletion. Yeah, there we go. And I kept my function still there. Good. All right. Now let's go in and let's set the update statement. I want to be able to update the faculty first name, faculty last name, and location ID. Alright. So what's the update statement going to look like? How's it going to start? Good, good. I'd have been worried if we didn't make it that far. <laughs> update. Alright. What comes after update? The name of the table, right. So that is update faculty. All right. Now what? Set. Set. FF name. FF name equals what? Question mark. Question mark, right. We don't know what it is. We're going to determine that at runtime. So we'll say oops, um, where the name equals question mark. Comma. And then last name. Yeah, FL name equals question mark. Comma. Location ID equals question mark. Where FID equals question mark. So again, just as we've done both in the select and in the delete, um, where where we don't where, where we're going to supply a value at runtime gets gets uh, a question mark. So in other words, if we're updating a single faculty person, which we are going to be doing on this grid, then we want to say update faculty, we want to set the faculty first name to something, faculty last name to something, location ID to something, where faculty ID equals something. All right, so let's go in. And well, let's keep that. Let's go into our SQL data source, configure the data source. I now will go into update and paste in my SQL statement. All right. Now, it didn't ask me if I wanted to regenerate the grid view. Why do you suppose that is? It did the first time I changed the, 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 the SQL data source, but it didn't this time. Why not? Nothing's going to change. Yeah, nothing's going to change as far as what we select. All right, we're still selecting the same thing. All right, so the columns we're selecting are still the same. We're just now giving them the ability to update it. So we changed the SQL data source. Do we have to change anything else on the page? I got to have an update. Right. We have to change the grid view now to allow updating. Remember that. These things, um, how do I want to put it? These things um, work together in pairs. There is the, the data source that is your pipeline 
of the database. It's your connection to the database. All right. Uh, and it contains the SQL statement that you want to run and the update statements and select and the delete and all those SQL statements. You then have the grid view, which is the visual component of it. It's what the user is going to interact with. And those two are married together. All right. And therefore, if we enable updates in the data source, we have to tell the grid view, okay, it's, it's okay to update these fields. So there should be an update there now. Now there should be an update. If you remember right, last time there was not an update. And sure enough, enable editing. And I'll click OK. And now we have editing. Now, let's go and run this and make sure everything works. We won't be able to delete any of these, right, because of foreign key constraints. Uh, I'm going to go and add someone just to make sure um, the delete still works. So now if I go and try to edit this, oops. if I do that, boom, I get an error. I am back to where I was sort of before. All right? Now, 
Now, how to fix that? Well, let's talk about one thing that we want to do. All right, and that is we want to do the same thing for updates as we did for deletes. So, grid view one, row deleted. There's also a grid view one, row updated. And probably can just cut and paste the code. Now the other thing I'm going to do is on page load, I'm going to clear out that error message. So we start with a clean slate each time. So now we try to delete, we get that. We try to edit the error message goes away. Now, if I forget to put an error, uh, or if I, if I eliminate the, the, the name there and click update, now I get my error message. And it doesn't give me the big, ugly, blow-up error message. That's not going to be comprehensible to the user and exposes information about our database to someone that, that might be looking to do something improper. That happened to me yesterday down in uh, the employment services. Mm -hmm. They got the biometric scan in right. their finger. <laughs> I saw the big wow. hair come up. Yeah. I just chuckled. <laughs> yeah. Now, the question you should ask yourself is, can we do better than that? What should we do I instead of that? Pardon me? Yeah, we could give them reasons, but we could probably even do better than that still. Highlight, send it to the location that needs to be addressed. Uh, yeah. In general, we need to put some real validation here. We don't have any validation code for that. All right? We don't have any validation code for this yet. All right? Therefore, um, the error is happening, and we're simply catching the air and, and handling it gracefully. We can do better than that. Why even bother our server trying to update an update that we know isn't going to work because we know that a name is required? So, therefore, the better thing to do is to put a validation control on here. We learned about validation controls, you know, week two. So the better thing to do is for us to put a validation control here. All right? Likewise, if I edit location ID, I can put any old number in there and click update. And it gives me the error. And it doesn't change it. But the better thing to do would be, as was said before, provide a drop down where I could pick the location instead of having, um, having to, to type in and have, have all the room numbers here in our college memorized that this is room number 58, so I need to put 58. And that's ridiculous. So the bottom line is, is we put in some uh, checks to handle errors gracefully, but we haven't done as much as we can to prevent errors from happening in the first place. All right? So yeah, we do need this code because of disasters and, and other stuff and stuff that we didn't anticipate. But these sorts of things, entering in a wrong location ID, entering in nothing for the, the first name, that's something that I can anticipate and I should be able to validate for. So that is one of the next things that we're going to do, is talk about how to do that. Before we do that, let's look at the code of our page now that we've added the update capabilities.
you now notice that we have an update command. And the update command is what we've put in and it has the parameters um, there. All right. Now, let's talk about validation. And indirectly, let's talk about the drop down. The default mode, the default behavior of a grid view is this. When you click edit to go into edit mode, every field that you can update gets put in a text box. And that's it. That's what it does. And then when you click update, it updates it. No validation, no drop downs, no nothing. Just a text box plain old text box with no validation. Well, clearly that's not a good idea. All right? But it takes us so far to achieving our goal. All right? It does 60% of the work for us, or 70%, or 80%. So, yeah, you would almost never use the default behavior for editing a grid view as is. All right? You would almost always customize it one way or another. All right? But again, don't whine about it, you know, because when I was a kid, we had to write all this stuff by hand. All right? We didn't even have a grid view that did 60% of it. We had to go and write all this code. All right? So again, a tool won't necessarily do everything for you, but it does some of the basic general functionality and frees you up to do the extra stuff. So. We're very rarely going to, to use this code as is, and we're almost always going to customize it. Now, how will I want to customize this one? I want to customize it by putting in validation, first of all, for the name. 